All right, thanks for watching, and today I'll give you a taste of topology because I'll define what it means for a set to be open. And for this, we first need to define the notion of an open ball. So let SD be a metric space. And what does it mean to have an open ball? Well, think about this in terms of, uh, let's say, RK. Um, what is the ball center of X in radius R? Well, it's really just a set of points that are at most R away from X. And in fact, it's the same definition here. So the ball, open ball, centered of X in radius R, is just a set of four points Y, such that the distance between X and Y is less than R. And in fact, let me give you a couple of examples of balls. So, for instance, in R2, you can consider the ball centered at 1, 2 and radius 3. Well, it's just a set of points that are at most 3 away from 1, 2. So, in other words, that's, this is the ball centered at 1, 2 and radius 3. More interestingly, let's see what it means to be a ball in R. So again, in R. And it turns out balls are very easy in R. And let's think about this. So what does it mean for a point to be at most R away from X? Well, the open ball here, it turns out it's nothing other than the interval x minus r and x plus r. Because those are the points that are at most r away from x. So bxr in this case is x minus r and x plus r. Okay, now that we know what an open ball is, we can finally define what an open set is. And it's kind of neat. So, what does it mean for a set E to be open? Well, it just means that no matter which point in E you pick, there's always a small ball that's included in E. In other words, for any point in E, there's always a small enough radius such that the ball centered at x and radius r is included in E. So, definition. If E is a subset of S, then E is open, technically open in S, if for all x in E, we can fit some small ball inside E. So there is a small enough radius such that the ball centered at x and radius r is included in E. In other words, what does that mean? It means no matter which point you pick in E, you can always move around a little bit and still stay inside E. And in fact, we'll see this is not true for not open sets. So we always have a little wiggle room, which is actually very nice to have. So Sometimes you say, well, if X is in it, then the family around X is also in it. So Now, let me give you a couple of examples. For instance, in R, the interval a comma b is open. And why is that true? Well, if I give you any point x, you can always fit a very small interval inside a comma b. In other words, uh, there is always r small enough such that the interval x minus r comma x plus r is in that interval a comma b. So, because because 
if x is in a comma b, then there is is r positive such that dxr, which remember is just the interval x minus r and x plus r, is actually included in a comma b. So no matter which point you pick in the interval, you can always fit a small ball inside it. And if you're curious what is r, well the smaller one of those two distances, so x minus a and b minus x. Namely, let r be less than x minus a and less than b minus x. Right? You can show that this does a trick. Another example of open balls, so another example of open sets is just what you think it is. The open ball itself is an open set. So bxr is always open. Why? Because, consider again this huge ball, bxr, that is x and that is r. Well, look, no matter which point you pick in that ball, let's say y, you can always fit a very small ball inside of it. In other words, no matter which y you pick, you can still move around a little bit and still be in that ball. All right, now let me give you an example of a set that's not open, so you can really understand what open means. So non-example three. So consider the closed interval a comma b. And I'm claiming this is not open. What does it mean for this to be not open? It means there's some culprit, which here it's a, such that no matter how small r is, the ball centered at a and radius r isn't included in your interval. In other words, what this means is, no matter um, how small you move away from a, you could get outside of the interval. So not, there's not always a ball that's included in your interval. So not open because no matter how small r is, no matter no matter how small r is, the ball centered at a and radius r, which is a minus r comma a plus r, is not included in your interval. And that's very different from the open interval a comma b because open here means no matter where you are in that interval you can always fit a very small ball inside your interval but here it's not true here at a there's no way of fitting a ball even if the radius is absolutely tiny and some say a is a is an edge or a cliff right so if you just go just a little bit less than a then you're not in it anymore okay all right, and again, that's why we like open sets because we have some wiggle room. Here, you don't have any wiggle room at A. And in fact, in a similar way, uh, A comma B, so closed A, open B, and clo open A, closed B are, are, are not open. All right. So now that we've seen examples of open sets, let's prove a couple nice properties about open sets. So. And you'll see this is very exciting. It leads me to an exciting subject in some sense. So facts. Well, first of all, the empty set is always open and S is open. This I won't prove, you can just do it, you know, uh, using the definition. Moreover, here's the interesting thing. Suppose you have any collection of open sets and you take the union, meaning sort of everything, then it turns out that union is also open. So the union of any number 
of open sets is open. And you might ask, is the same true for the intersection? Not quite, so almost, but provided we just take finite number of intersections. And I'll give a counterexample in a second. So the intersection of finitely many open sets is open. In other words, let's say if you take the intersection of three open sets, that's open. But careful, this is not true for infinite intersections. So let me give you a non-example. Take un to be the uh, open set, let's see, minus one to the minus one over n and one over n. So you see u1, that's just the open interval minus one and one. U2, it's the open interval minus one half and one half. U3 is the open interval minus one third and one third. And the question is, what is the intersection? Well, kind of, those sets converge to zero in some sense. So in fact, the intersection is just zero. In fact, it is zero because zero is included in all of those sets. Then, the intersection of the UN is just the zero set, but the zero set is not open. There's no way to fit a ball in the zero set. So that's why it's very important to take finite many intersections. All right, now, why do I find that so exciting? Because it turns out any set, okay, that satisfies those three properties, it's what's called a topological space. So after this fact, we know that any metric space is a topological space, but not every topological space is a metric space. And the study of such kind of topological spaces, it's what's called a topology. So topos logos, the study of places. And topology is a very nice ally of math. That's why uh, I respect it, because um, I, I guess an ally of analysis, because a lot of analysis facts can be proven using topology, like the Baer category theorem, or Tikhonov's theorem, or the Tietze extension theorem, etc., etc. All fancy words. So that's why it's very useful in analysis, but it's also uh, a field of its own. So topology, you just study uh, objects where you don't really care about distances, but more about open sets. All right, and now I'm gonna prove this, and again, you can skip ahead to the rest of the video if you'd like, but it's still pretty exciting, and if you're my student, it's on the homework. Um, so again, as I said, I will not prove one, let's prove two. So, um, Suppose uh, u alpha is open for all alpha. And again, not necessarily n, it could be an uncountable collection if you'd like. Um, and let n, let u be the union of the u alphas. All u alpha. So again, we have every set u alpha and we just take the union. Now, here's the thing. So if x is in the union, then x is in u alpha for some alpha. So if you pick any x here, well, x has to be in u alpha for some alpha, but then the point is, so here's the rest of the proof. We know that there's a ball around x that is in u alpha, okay? just by openness, and then, in particular, this ball is in that whole union. That's why it's open. So since uh, x is in u alpha and u alpha is open, 
we know that the ball centered at x and radius r is in u alpha uh, for some r. But the thing is, u alpha, well, it's contained in the union, so actually, bxr is in the union. And therefore, we're done because we found some radius such that the ball centered at x and radius r is in that huge open set. So uh, u is open. Just by definition. Definition means we have to find some radius such that bxr is in your set. And then we've just shown this. All right. And now let's do the same thing for intersection. So suppose... Let's say u1 that the, the up to un are open. And let u be the intersection from k from 1 to n of un. So again, just the intersection of all those. So this little thing. But then uh, if x is in u, we have to find a small ball that's in u as well. But then here's the thing, if x is in u, then by definition of the intersection, x is in uk for all k. And I'm feeling very British today. x is in uk, not only that uk is open. So since uk is open, for some, we have that bxrk is included in UK for some uh, RK. The only issue is those radii might not be the same. So one might be smaller than the other, but not a problem at all. Because we want a really tiny ball inside the intersection, just let R to be the minimum of all those radii. So let R be the minimum of R1, R2, up to Rn. And again, here is where the finiteness is very important. Each radius is positive. So if you take the minimum of a finite number of numbers, and you get a positive number. So if you take the minimum of n positive numbers, it's still positive. But then, if you consider uh, the ball bxr, but then for all k, bxr. Well, first of all, since the radius is very small, okay, that ball bxr is also included in the same ball, but radius rk. So it's included in bxrk, but by assumption bxrk is in uk. And therefore, what do we get? Bxr is in uk for all k. So since it's included in all of the uk's, it also has to be in the intersection of all the uk's. So uh, Bxr is in the intersection for k from 1 to n of uk, and that's just u. And that's just what we wanted to show. Namely, given x, there's some ball that's included in u. All right, and therefore we're done. Okay, now let's just continue. Now let's just continue with a very small topic related to open sets because, well, unfortunately not all sets are open, but you could still have that for some of the points, there is an open ball that's included in that set. And those points, we call them interior points. So definition, so if E is any subset of S, then x is called an interior point
if there's some small ball on X that's in that set. So if there is, is R positive with BXR is included in your set. So it's like openness, except it's specific to this point. So we're fixing X and we're asking, is there a ball around uh, X that's in, in your set? Okay. And in fact, those points are so important, we'll put them usually in a collection. So uh, definition, if I write E circle, kind of circle like a ball, it's just the set of all interior points. Of e. It's like interior design, but for topology. Um, so for instance, okay, let me just show you a couple of um, examples. For instance, if you take the closed interval 0 comma 1, well, let's ask what the interior points are. Well, look, anything strictly inside 0, 1, you can fit a little ball. So anything inside 0, 1, it's an interior point. There's always a wiggle room, but 0 is not an interior point because there's no wiggle room around 0. You cannot fit any ball here, and you cannot fit any ball around 1. So in fact, the set of all interior points is just this open interval 0, comma 1. So it is always true that the interior points are less than your set, but you could also have something crazy. For instance, what are the interior points of the rational numbers? Well, notice, for the rational numbers, you can never fit a ball around x that is in q, because there are a lot of irrational numbers in any neighborhood of x. So the question is, what are the interior points of the rational numbers? There are none. For no point can you fit a ball inside your set. So in fact here, the, uh, what's called, the interior point is the empty set. And last but not least, what about the interior point of 0, 1? Well, any point here is an interior point. For any point, you can fit a little ball. So the interior of 0, 1 is just 0, 1. And in fact, you may notice this is the same. This is true for any set, open set. So fact, in fact, E is open if and only if the interior of E is equal to the set. Because, again, what does it mean for a set to be open? It means no matter which point you pick, you can fit a ball. So the interior, in this case, has to be the whole set. Um, all right, thank you so much. And next time, we'll do closed sets.